we got a lot of shit on the video we did where it was the top things that annoy behavior analysts. So they were like the top things that, top seven things that annoy behavior analysts. So given that you're a parent and I'm a parent, we want to flip it around and talk about like the top things that annoy parents that That's clinicians do. And there were some really good ones we were talking about. I, I like the ones you brought up. Um, explain that one about where a, a, like a, cl a clinician comes in the home and talks about your son as though they're uh, an object rather than a person. Like what, like give that example about cancerous versus, you know, um, that was, just, that was just a good the, one. the whole yeah. describing as autistic, uh, he is autistic versus uh, my child has autism. It's it, using the analogy of cancer, you say someone has cancer, you wouldn't say they are cancerous or they're canceric. Yeah. So why would you say they, they're autistic instead of they have an autism? Yeah, yeah it's like placing a label on a, yeah, on a it kid. It doesn't define them. Yeah. yeah, doesn't mean that they are aut autistic. They might be affected with autism or, uh, yeah, it's just you know. politically correct way. Yeah. Because you were talking about how clinicians might come into home and talk about your son. Like I'm not there. Like you're not there. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think the, the, the science part of the brain is, is working and they're working out problems. And you know, I'm standing there, I'm like, oh, I, could Im I could have some input too. Yeah. You know, I, I know him a little bit too. Yeah. <laughs> you, part of the conversation. half the time, I think you, Bob, have more training than most of the clinicians that come in your home. Uh, hopefully not all the time, but sometimes. I think that you, you've been through more and have seen more and have way more street smarts, someone like yourself, than a brand new clinician or a board certified behavior analyst coming into your home. Plus you're gonna know your son way better than everyone else. I, I've had clinicians come in my home with Ben and talk to me like, um, like I'm either not talk to me at all and just talk, you know, just like talk to each other about Ben or not, they don't even look at me. They're just totally dealing with acting as though I'm not even there. I've had clinicians come in and all they do is observe and take data. Like, when are you going to intervene? Is everything baseline friggin' forever? You ever have that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little data overkill. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, yeah. I appreciate it and it's definitely, you know, is valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the other, you know. Like, we, eventually, we, eventually we need an intervention. <laughs> yes, yes, and um, I've literally and, seen know. a clinician come in my home and do baseline for like two months. And we were like, I guess it's time to intervene now because there's only so much ABC data you can take and I see behavior Also, well, sometimes the school is like ins over insistent on that. They might, to, yeah. It's just to justify maybe something. I mean, the data collection is necessary, but like not at the expense of never intervening and the clinician never being hands on. Right, and not for the purpose of justifying something. Yes. Yeah. You know, just it's, for the sake. It's not just for the reason of justification. It's for actually the data should be used to analyze your future um, strategy. Just because your kid may drop their pants or do something, it's not everything is sexual. Exactly. <laughs> not everything's like an inappropriate sexual behavior just because you know, he accidentally exposed himself or whatever. You've had or, that. Or he falls on the couch and he just grabbed himself for a second like any teenage boy yeah. would do. Um, yeah. It's not exactly a sexual, it doesn't have to mean it's, it's sexual. Yeah, it's not like a sexually inappropriate behavior where all of a sudden, oh, we have to have an interdisciplinary team meeting because he's inappropriate sexually. I, it, I hear you. Could be self-injurious, could be STEM, could yep. be attention, anything. I love it. People talking about Ben using scientific terms like, well, Ben's an organism that behaves this way. I, I, I think I told you before, like when I was first in my career and I was in West Virginia, I actually was thinking that way because that that, they were the terms I learned in behavior analysis. And I actually said to a mom that, well, you know, every organism learns this way. And she goes, because we we're in West Virginia, she had accents, she you talking about you call my kid a worm? Because <laughs> I said organisms, so that was like, I yeah, it's like I using the wrong words. If, I don't know if they do this anyway, but somehow in the schooling, incorporate some type of uh, 
psychology class or explains stages of grief so yeah. they could understand what parents, like what are, going parents are going through instead of or, just, just the scientific shit, you know? People talk to your son like he's a baby. <laughs> Where I've had that with Benner. People are like, oh, well, Gucci goo. You know, like, wait, he's freaking 16, 17 years old. You know, just because he has some receptive and expressive language issues doesn't mean you talk to him like a baby. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Yeah, it, yeah, and it, that's annoying. And I actually catch myself doing that too sometimes, and it, it bothers me when I do it. When you do it, yeah. People talk loud to to them as though they can't yeah, hear. Yeah, they, they, if they don't answer the first time, that must mean they can't hear. So yeah, just say it louder. Yeah, I've I've literally had people say, "Hey Ben, you want to go swimming?" Like they're in his face screaming, and they're wondering why all of a sudden he's like, you know, like having problems because they're screaming in his face, and he doesn't have a hearing deficit. So or ask the same question again too quick. Like don't give him a chance to answer to or respond. respond, and it, that just uh, sets off something else because it's like now he's asked three times in a row. And yeah, on. you just hit hit him up with three things in a row, and you're wondering why you didn't even wait for a response for the first. Yeah, you know. love it. You can't be on your game implementing a discrete trial program 24-7 when your child is awake, like engaging every second. Just because they can for the hour or two that they're there doesn't mean you can engage every second, including have, like you can't place your son or daughter on extinction, ignore like everything all the time. You've had that, people yeah, ever suggest Yeah, I can't that. be a policeman all the time. I gotta, I gotta be dad. Be dad. I, I, I'm tired myself. I, you know, I can't just police them and get to the point where my kids look at me and they're just like, oh, you know, he's gonna yell at me for something or he's gonna make me do work. Yeah, because be then all of a sudden, as a dad, you're like an unpleasant, you're aversive. We've experienced situations where a clinician comes in our home and, and they say one thing and then they show up at an IEP meeting and say the exact opposite and you're like, whoa, is this politics? You ever have that happen? Yes, and yeah, it could be politics. It could be pressure from the agency by the school or yeah. something else going on. At home hours that make sense, meaning um, I, I know it's, it's tough to staff some of the cases and in a very short time. Uh, it, it can't just try to plug in, oh, let's spread it across two people and have one person four hours, another person an hour here. It's got to be convenient for the parents, but it's, you know, just because it's hours available through yep. the staff doesn't mean it's exactly going to work out gotcha. for the parents. Situation. Yeah. You might need to work on a showering goal or something, and look, showers don't occur at 3.15 p.m. <laughs> it might have to be later in the evening. I've, I've had that before. So. Or like sometimes their medication, the time of the day their medication is definitely a spike or not in behavior. So they're going to see the best or the worst of somebody. And then I'll see something different at night when the medication wears off. Yeah, and they'll be like, oh, I love I that, saw that. <laughs> I told you it was good. Just going back to communication, um, some of the situations, and uh, yeah, I realize that somebody's in a work setting, Okay, I'm going on vacation. I'm giving you a month's notice of, of going on vacation. Um, but as a parent, all I know is somebody's showing up on Sunday at one o'clock, for instance. Yep. They don't show up. I call, I text, I don't hear from them. Then about a half hour later, I get um, a call from somebody at the agency. Oh, such and such is uh, on vacation. Yeah. He said he notified you. They told yeah, you. They told you 89 days ago they're going to be on it, vacation. It might as well have been 100 years. Yeah. It, it's, as a parent, you're trying to get through the friggin' that day. Yeah. Let yeah. alone think about 90 yeah. days in advance that they scheduled a vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be good if someone remind you that week mm -hmm. or that day with a text message. There's going to be times where you're going to try to. Uh, have an extinction or a burst or, or something, but your other kid's going to sabotage that completely. So yeah. um, some great suggestions with um, uh, good intentions could not work and, and you try to figure out what's not work. Are they not following it? Are they not following through with whatever? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just can't. If, yep. uh, for instance, Chase spitting 
spitting at someone in the face, spits me in the face, and my plan is to ignore it. So if 20 times I get spit in the face and ignore it, I'm doing well, and then Cole spits in his face and undoes everything. Like so that one just thing spit in the undid face everything. Times for yeah. no reason. Yep. So uh, sometimes thinking about the, the siblings. Um, yeah, their impact on things because yeah. it's not in a vacuum and the brother or sister may get involved and then it mm -hmm. messes up the perfect mm -hmm. system. That and that also could ruin something that, that the other kid is enjoying and then that sets off something else and yep. now you have two problems. I love it. That's, that's a good one. I didn't even think of that one, but that's something. BCBAs, behavior analysts, clinicians, you need to understand, you need to understand these things because these are what impact parents. This is what impacts teachers. You're not in your own world. You know, you're out of the laboratory. You need to get real.